Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for this WA webinar. I'm Nikki Jovakik from Lookup Strata, and I'm also the Managing Director of Tower Body Corporate, a body corporate company in Queensland. I'm your host for today's webinar. We happily welcome Jamie Horner from Empire Strata Management and Ashley Goodchild from PM Collective. Jamie and Ashley have joined with us today to discuss two vital real estate roles, the strata manager and the property manager. While many of the daily activities in each position differ, there's also an overlap. And sometimes conflict exists between strata managers and property managers, but Jamie and Ashley are here to champion a better way. Is there an opportunity for the two professions to work together for the greater good and better strata living? And what do you think? Let us know. Before we begin, I'd like to mention that, as always, the information in this session, including the chat conversations, is not legal advice and should not be relied upon for advice. You should seek independent advice before acting on the information contained in the session. And we welcome Jamie Horner from Empire Strata Management. Jamie has been been working in the real estate industry for over 20 years. She has experience in residential and commercial property and strata management. Jamie has been a REIWA trainer and a member of the REWA Strata Network Committee and the Property Investors Council of WA. And she's completed a master's in property, a bachelor in commerce and a diploma in management, certificate four in strata community management and training and assessment. She enjoys collaboration and sharing knowledge in this great industry. Jamie is a regular Lookup Strata contributor, providing practical responses to our WA audience's strata questions. And also joining us today is Ashley Goodchild from PM Collective. With 23 years in property management, Ashley excels as a specialist in investor buying and education, and her support for first time and sustainable investing is unparalleled. Ashley is a dedicated educator in the real estate industry, and her advocacy for sustainable investing showcases forward thinking and her client-centric approach emphasizes tailored st strategies and ethical practices. So thank you so much for joining us for this really interesting session today, Jamie and Ashley. Thanks, Nikki. That is fantastic. I'm going to go straight into our slide. Um, thank you, Nikki. I know that everyone at Lookup Strata does a wonderful job in not just answering questions from strata managers, property managers, but also lot owners. So getting straight into it, because Ash and I can talk for a long time, we've figured it out. So I'm going to do a quick intro on Ash. For those of you that are on the webinar that don't know Ash, um, Ash runs PM Collective. And one of the best things I can say about PM Collective is it's a great way for property managers to collaborate. We've just had a chat with Ash, hoping that she's just going to throw strata management in there for next year under the umbrella as well. Um, Ash won't tell you, all the wonderful awards also that her team has recently won. So congratulations, Ash, on being a REWA leader, property management team, um, business development manager. Ash um, definitely believes in education and collaboration. She's an investors buying specialist, but something that I think we all love about Ash is that she's a straight talker. Um, you can always pick up the phone, have a chat with Ash. I know that when I've had some of my worst moments in real estate, I've picked up the phone and I've got a wake up call from Ash. So thanks, Ash, and uh, welcome to our webinar. Thank you, Jamie. That's super kind. I um, I find that sometimes I have to put a disclaimer on before I speak to people just to say, listen, I am really black and white and um, I don't mean to offend. I just sort of say it as it is. Um, Jamie, over to the next slide because I think you've got control of them. Excellent. So Jamie is, um, is someone who I'd call a friend as well as a really wonderful colleague. Um, loads of experience in property management and a real focus on strata management at the moment and very much the same is in that education piece as well, a REWA trainer and, um, and very much about giving to the industry to make it better for everyone with the collaboration. So Jamie, it is an absolute pleasure to do that with you today. Thanks, Ash. And we'll, we'll keep it on our professional level rather than our fun personal level for today. So we're going to run through these sides and Ash, you're going to tell me what is the role of the property manager? So a property manager is someone who looks after the property. They look after the people that live in the property and those that own it. They organise the maintenance and upkeep of the property. They collect funds as part of the management of the property, manage funds in trust and the collection of funds, uh, pay accounts for landlords, 
They act as an intermediary between owners and tenants, work with creditors, arrange maintenance, arrange quotes, and provide monthly statements on income and expenditure. And Jamie, what does a strata manager do? (laughs) Ash, I'm not going to repeat what you just said because I don't know if many of you noticed, but they actually repeat on both sides. Now, Ash, would you say that most people know what a property manager is? Other than what you've said there, do you feel like most people in the industry know what a property manager is? Absolutely. And would most owners know their property manager pretty well? They should know their property manager. They should know the name and who to call when they phone the office. Okay. How about strata manager, Ash? Would most of your PMs know the strata manager by any chance? I would say very unlikely and we have a note in the system and we might know the, the office possibly, but absolutely not the strata manager. Right. So I'm not going to repeat what Ash says, but something I think that we can all see is that the roles are extremely similar, yet one is extremely well known. And I hate to say with strata management, we are even confused with property management. So when I'm doing my Google work, a lot of the time people, even if they're looking for a strata manager, will still put in that term of property manager because it's so unknown. Now, Ash, we overlap on a lot of things. We almost, as you can see there, do the same identical thing. So I'm going to go to the next slide and I'm going to get you to talk about what the differences are for the property manager. Yeah, so a property manager is a well-known real estate industry role. So we hear a lot of talk about it, even, you know, social media and in the media. Um, The property is defined. Your landlord owns a property on a block of land generally, or in this case, in a strata. And uh, we know exactly what we're looking after for that client. We generally work with just one set of owners. So when there is maintenance, we're calling up one owner and getting permission from that one person. Works and decisions are made in consultation with that owner. Selects and places prospect, uh, prospective tenants into the property organises the maintenance uh, for that property, inspects the property on a regular basis. So we would inspect the property every three months over here in WA. Uh, We plan and set budgets for property maintenance and improvements and give the owners some recommendations when it comes to renovations to get a better dollar for them. Um, We, um, again, work with owners and tenants to really bridge that relationship there. We work as per the Residential Tenancies Act. We are licensed and we handle our disputes at the magistrate's court in WA. Okay, so now I'm going to do the differences. Thanks, Ash. Um, A lot of you and a lot of people in the industry, well, not even just outside of the industry, don't really know the difference. A lot owner can easily get confused. Um, Ash, you've got a full company called PM Collective, which everyone knows is about property managers. Whereas if we probably had a company called Strata Management Collective, unfortunately, a lot of people wouldn't understand. So it's a really misunderstood role, even within salespeople and property managers. Um, The property is not easily defined. So we jokingly would say, well, read the strata plan and it will tell you. And for any of us that work in strata, reading a strata plan almost requires a degree and a whole pile of coffee and maybe even a vodka, I'll be honest, because even in your office, you can easily debate what are the boundaries. We work with multiple sets of owners. So for every building, there can be five owners or there can be 200. And I think something that property managers don't understand is is that our owners can change regularly as well as the council of owners. So every single year, the main owners that we work with change. So Ash, would I be right in saying that your property managers get to build a really good relationship with that owner? Like after one years and two years, what's the relationship like automatically? Yeah, you would expect that relationship to um, be there for around, let's call it five years on average, really getting to know that owner, their style, and then starting to slowly be able to make decisions without sometimes even consulting them because you've got that trust already there. So obviously, you know, you guys also, you don't, I'm assuming, like to change over tenant. You'd you'd also prefer a good long-term tenant that you build a relationship with? Yeah, and tenants, I would say at the moment, on average, probably, I think about two, two and a half years, we're actually getting to the point where we're getting that nice long-term tenancy as well. Now, something that we need to note in Strata is, is that our owners change regularly through sale. 
Um, and one sale can change a full dynamic in a building. We've also got the fact that our council of owners are nominated each year and that can vary. So the wonderful relationship that you may build up with a set of owners or a bulk of owners can easily change the next year. So it's a restarting ground in relation to a relationship in strata. Um, our levy amounts, works and decisions are made in conjunction with all owners at that annual general meeting. So we don't really have market forces where you tell the owner, this is the CMA, this is what we think the rent is, this is what you can achieve. Um, everything we do budget wise, it does come down to a decision of all owners. So if you can understand if I want more levies, what are my chances of getting a lovely group of owners in that are on the same page? Um, we organise maintenance of the common property, but again, in consultation vote with all owners. We do act in the same way as you guys do as an intermediary between all owners, residents and third parties, whether that be insurance, creditors, all those sort of things. We work as part of the Strata Titles Act, um, and we're pretty lucky that in 2020 we got an overhaul of that act because the 1985 1996 was becoming almost defunct. Um, Ash, would you agree that the Residential Tenancies Act gets a review quite regularly? I think it gets reviewed regularly enough. Yeah. Um, and something that I think I'd like to note is, is that with the Residential Tenancies Act, you guys have some really, as much as we all don't love legislation, you get some pretty good time frames. You get, you know, seven days, 14 days, all of that sort of stuff. The yeah. Strata Titles Act is definitely not time orientated as well. Um, and it's more open um, as to how to manage a strata. In WA, I will note we are not licensed. So um, it is a little bit different in relation to how we work. And we go to the State Administrative Tribunal, which means we don't go there often. Ash, would, how would you talk about the magistrate's court process for a property manager? Uh <laughs> <laughs> it depends on which magistrate's court you've got to go to. Um, it, it's actually, to be honest, it's pretty clear. Like it, it's obviously a frustrating process, but it's pretty clear these days. You can just log in, do a court application, pick the date that you want the hearing, you turn up. Um, you know, again, decisions are hit and miss sometimes. But if I'm going to be honest, I think it's, I, I quite like the system. I'm okay yeah. with it. And Ash, would you say those disputes in the magistrate's court, you log in, you have your day, if it can't be mediated by the mediator or the judge that day, you then go to trial, but it's it's usually a, it's a short term sort of dispute resolution process. It's not long winded. No, absolutely not. So um, the difference for strata managers is that we go to the state administrative tribunal and a lot of the time, personally, we don't. When we're at this stage, lawyers actually get involved and it's months, months years. So I feel like the residential tenancies, the dispute resolution process is probably a little bit quicker when you can't meet a resolution. So we just talked about all the things that are similar, but I can also think that we could probably see that we've got quite a few that are different. So, okay. Ash, do you want to take us through this? Okay. So the same challenges that we do have, um, first up, I would say we've actually got the same clients. So that's a really big part of it. We are both problem solvers. We are both debt collectors, dispute resolution, mediation, uh, defect rectification, police officers, social workers. We, we, we ultimately still have the same clients, Jamie. Like we're still, you're working for my landlord, and I'm working for your your um, client as well. So that's really the same challenges and the same things we deal with um, when it comes to maintenance or troubleshooting maintenance. We are the same, except I think it sounds like the strata probably just has a little bit of a, a, a hoop they've got to jump over a little bit more than what we do because we're a bit more direct. Um. Ash, I must admit, for anyone that's looking at this screen, if you're from MRI, I hope you don't mind I used your images. I'll see Jessica from MRI this afternoon, so hopefully asking afterwards is fine. But I think, Ash, when we look at the MRI as an example port for property manager, which they have done quite regularly, um, we only got our first report for strata managers. So the first ever was done on Austin 2023. But when you open them both up, the difficulties that we all have are actually quite similar. So I suppose I'm going to get to the question that we all manage property. We all have that same owner. 
I'm going to ask the question, Ash, then of, before I get to this slide, actually, I'm going to get to this slide actually straight away, why the great divide? So, Ash, I'm going to get you to look at the stats from our survey and tell me about why property managers feel this way about strata managers. So, Ash, you get the you get the donut or the little graph on the left. Yeah, and, and when I compare the two, I think, you know, us property managers, we're pretty hard, aren't we, with a 65% negative towards the strata managers. And I feel a little bit bad and a little bit guilty because, you know, the strata managers are okay with us, but we seem to have such a strong opinion on them. Um, and it, it's it's no surprise, you know, I've done a recent post on this um, about things that we get frustrated at. I, I won't lie, Jamie, there's a lot of frustrations from a property manager who is just trying to get the job done quickly and everything just seems to be so slow from a strata manager. Now, I know that there's, um, you know, um, hoops to jump through, but the standard property manager doesn't know that. And, um, yeah, and I think, I mean, I would go as far as saying really that 13% neutral, you might as well call it negative as well, to be honest, because it's certainly not good. So really, I look at that and I just think the fact that only 12% of property managers have had a positive experience with strata managers um, shows to me an absolute lack of education on a property manager's part to really understand the role and to have more empathy towards you guys with what you're having to deal with. Um, and we're not educated enough from you guys to help us understand that so that, yeah, so that we've got more empathy, really. That's all I think it comes down to. Um, Ash, can I say that the 12% were mainly from agencies or, sorry, from property managers who have strata management in their portfolio? So it, does that make sense? So I would ask, would we have a very similar graph for property managers and salespeople? Can I ask in an agency? Or do you think they've come together and sort of worked out that even though we're different you know, it's, it's a divide we definitely had in sales and property management probably some time ago. Yeah, I've never worked in an office with an actual strata management, to be honest. I've only ever worked in, like, I sort of feel like strata managers, like, are on their own. So many offices <laughs> just do strata management. They specialise in it. So I haven't really, um, I, I'm inter I, I find that interesting, though, that the 12% positive have come out of the people that have that strata management inside their office. I mean, that's... Yeah. They've yeah. either had strata management within their office or they've done both roles. So, mm -hmm. Ash, do you think it's time we do a little PM collective tour of strata management offices? Yes, that would be a great idea. <laughs> I like that. Nikki, you're welcome as well. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to do the strata managers and property managers. And to tell you the truth, strata managers, I will be honest, Ash, are less scathing of property managers. Um, most of the feedback that I get from, and I know that you put the neutral more into the negative. However, I felt with the strata managers that the neutral was actually more towards the positive. So we've almost got a 50-50 here um, in the sense that I think we've also got to understand that there's a lot more property managers and a lot less strata managers. So again, different figures there, um, but definitely a lot less vocal about how they feel about property managers. So for property managers out there, I know that I've definitely had some feedback though on strata managers. It's not necessarily negative, but strata managers, I'm going to be honest, as one myself, we've got a lot to work on, I think. So let's go on. So Ash, what are they both required to have? Definitely problem solving skills, uh, time management skills, which I think we'll get into in a <laughs> And uh, project management, um, and, and that's for property managers and strata managers. I mean, and, and, you know, in fairness, I say that lightly, property managers also need to get better probably at some of their time management as well. So if we're supposed to both be exceptional communicators, Ash, mm -hmm. why are we not communicating well with each other? Well, We've had this discussion about how what I would expect a reasonable time frame would be. So, for example, as a property manager, my tenants and my landlords would generally be expecting an answer to something within 24 to 48 hours. That's sort of just what. And, and I, actually, 
would go as far as saying that I think that's actually what all businesses should be working towards. I think that's just where we are at in our society. And I don't understand why strata managers have this like either no response or seven days or 14 days. Like I just, a lot of the problems are actually just because I've sent you something. You haven't responded as quickly as I wanted you to respond. I've got tenants and owners screaming at me and I've got this email that's just gone into, you know, into thin air. Um, and so, you know, I guess we'll get into sort of what some of the gripes are, but that's probably one of the very biggest gripes where if a strata manager just emailed back and said, hey, just letting you know, I've got your email. This is the process that I have to follow. Um, give me seven days um, to come back to you with a proper answer. No problems at all. I can then go back to my owner and tenant and say, here, this is what we're waiting on, uh, as opposed to get us as a property manager getting the pressure from owners and tenants. Why haven't you got back to me? Why haven't you got back to me? And then us having to pass the blame, say, well, the strata manager hasn't. It doesn't look that confident on our part when, we, when we're passing the blame as well. But if we've got some control over, yes, I have heard back, this is the action plan. Um, I think that that's one of the biggest biggest things that would make a massive difference. Now, um, Nikki, I'm not sure if we're allowed to utilise the chat box here, but as PMs, I don't know, does does everyone like a 24 to 48 hour response time? I mean, please feel free to throw it in the chat and I'll maybe get Ash to have a look at it because I'm terrible at coordinating PowerPoint slides as well as opening a chat box. But, you know, Ash and I, we talk about this and I get it. Property managers, we want a 24 at worst, 48-hour response time. Ash, what are you getting from strata managers? Because I can tell you what the survey results came back with. Okay, I would say that, I mean, I want to say that half of them sometimes it's no response. Um, and if I do get a response, it would it would be around that seven-day mark. Um, it's very rarely uh, 24 hours. Okay. So if you're averaging seven, and I must admit, when we looked at the survey, a majority of people said some response would be great. So we can acknowledge that they're not getting any response. And then we can acknowledge that even seven to 14 is probably a push for a property manager, right? So mm -hmm. I'm going to say, look, strata managers, property managers, what are we expecting for communication time? Ash, I'll let you look in the chat box and see if there is any way some middle ground, because I don't know, I do believe that most property managers definitely are 24 to 48. It's their business model. But I think strata managers, we've got a lot longer. So um, let's go next then into, we've just talked about the great divide, Ash. We've talked about the different roles. I'm definitely going to say that even though we are debt collectors, problem solvers, police officers, social workers, would you say we have much empathy for each other's role? I'm not going to speak on behalf of the strata manager, but on a property manager's point of view, I think there's um, a, a lot of lack of empathy. And, and I, I'm honest, I will say um, I am not very empathetic towards a strata manager. Um, I've been trained a bit more to learn to be but originally absolutely not, no empathy for mine. But I think, don't you think that comes down to like a personality of a property manager? Like we're just so used to being so unemotional, get the job done, don't listen to sob stories, don't listen to why you can't pay your rent this week. So we're quite we're quite harsh, I think, as a personality. And that, it, that lack of empathy, um, you know, I know that sometimes comes into my personal life as well, you know, unless I see blood and bones, I'm not interested in, in your, you know, being sick. But it's, um, I think it's a personality trait of a property manager. Like, but it's funny because we do have empathy on one end, but lack of empathy for um, um, stuff like this. And, but you can tell me from a strata manager what you think. Well, look, I think the strata managers are definitely more 50-50, but I'll also look at some of the feedback. And I've had property managers say, you know, why does the strata manager treat me like an idiot? Why will the strata manager not explain something to me? Um, you know, I, I think a lot of property uh, strata, you know, property managers also say, you know, strata managers just say, no, it's your responsibility. But there's no, there's no background. There's no feedback. There's no 
agreeingness to, to educate each other along the way. So let's look hopefully then. So what can a strata manager do to bridge the divide? So um, Ash, are you happy if I go through with these and then come yeah. back to you? Okay. This is your biggest bugbear, Ash, and it has definitely be raised. I mean, I think Michelle from Rent West also put this in there. Use the address of the property in your communication. Ash, tell me about it. Do you actually get emails without the address? All the time. Like, like you send, Strata Manager send an email to say, Strata Plan 6231 has car parking cleaning this Friday. Now, surely you know that I'm just going to be responding back to you and saying, what the hell is Strata 62310? And I've been creating you more work and getting more emails from people asking stupid questions. Like, like that's that's not fair to you either. But I don't understand why you can't just include the address in that correspondence for me. Like property managers don't necessarily, they don't really know the Strata plan number. Maybe if you had the, the building name, we might be able to work it out. But, but really... Surely it's just simple just to put an address. And look, strata managers that are out there, I don't know what your software does. I know, Ash, since you raised this issue with me about a year ago, I found a merge code that was property address. And I went, oh, great, I'll put that in there. Um, but can I ask, Ash, does your software allow you to search by strata plan? No. Not because not. we, see, we search by strata plan. So for us, we don't understand that your software doesn't allow you to search by strata plan. You can, I'm assuming, search by owner name, property address, or tenant name. Correct. Okay. So, and and now that we're like, I'm just thinking like troubleshooting, our software that we currently use in our office has only probably in the last, I think, 12 months started allowing us to put the strata manager's name in the box, where previously to find out who the strata manager was, I would have to go to transactions and find the last levy that I paid to find out who it is. So that's only a new feature. And I mean, the only way to get around it, and I wouldn't want to do this, is that if I put an, an owner's name, and then put dash, you know, SP, strata plan, and then the number there. It's not it's not ideal. Owners would yes. like that on their statement either. So yes. um, I don't even think there's a way that we can get around it. So strata managers, I would definitely say try, well, put the address in. Number one, bugbear, put the address in, which means if your software doesn't allow that merge code to put the property address in, Let's all go and annoy our Strata software so that we can. Um, Ash, would you also say, though, that building name is problematic? Because sometimes for us, it's the building name and the Strata plan. Yeah, I mean, the building name I can I can sort of work with because you sort of remember it sometimes, but it's pretty difficult. So. And I'll give you an example. I've got one in South Perth as an example called The Views. It, you know, your chances of knowing that is, yeah, and you're a South Perth regular. So, okay, next one acknowledge or confirm receipt of email. So even if we can't respond in a certain period of time, is that what you guys, is that Ash, what property managers are saying that they want? Just confirm you've received the email and when we may expect a response. Can I, can I be honest with this? I'm a huge fan of the automatic reply personally. Okay. I would like it to be, and if there's property managers, feel free to put this in the chat. I would prefer it to be a little bit more customised like because surely I'm not going to have to wait 14 days for a response on, you know, pets, for example, you know, or, or something that could make... I'm writing that one down, Ash. We'll talk about pets. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, so, I mean, yes, like, sure. But I think in our mind, we sort of all know that there's going to be a long delay. So sending out the automatic response just as a fixed thing on your email sort of clogs up my inbox so I would rather something that comes back a bit more personalized really to say thanks because this is maintenance or because this is something I've got to check with the um with the council of owners I just need a few more days to look into it for you I think I would feel a bit more um better receiving that and a, and a bit more that you've got it in control as opposed to you just being a strata manager who just blanket does okay. those order replies personally. 
Okay, I'm going to hurry us along because Ash and I can talk for two and a half hours on this. So we definitely at least want an email, not an automatic one that just confirms receipt of email and maybe some details on a response time would be fantastic. Because that allow you to give something then back to the owner, which is great, you know, confirmed with the strata manager waiting to hear back. Okay. And it keeps them off our back as well when we can do that. And then we're less likely to hassle you as a strata manager um, because we know when to wait. So when a strata manager says no, it's your responsibility, I've got, just give us a reason why. I'm assuming you don't want an essay, Ash, but you want a couple of dot points. No, the lot boundaries note that this is the owner's responsibility or something like that. Is that so you can explain that to the owner? Because I'm assuming you have to tell the owner why. Yeah, I think, yeah, just some reference for us. Like, I don't think, um, like, in fairness, I wouldn't expect a great big paragraph from the strata manager. Like, that's not fair for them because I think a property manager should have some understanding. But I think that if the strata manager could just point us in the right direction of where we could find the answers. So even if it's just something like, please refer to the strata plan, which shows that it's the owner's responsibility. And then, you know, maybe I think it's fair for them, the property manager, to work it out. If they've got any questions, they can come back. But just that reference point would be helpful. And I think you answered the next one then, Ash, helping the, helping the property manager in just understanding the boundaries and the bylaws. No long essays, but at least pointing us in the right direction for the information. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, I think the understanding part is pretty particular Um, in, in that it's pretty obvious you know, the property manager is acting for the owner at times and is just their messenger. They need to show that they've put the notation forward, that they've had a response and that everyone's on the same page. Um, you know, property managers have noted not getting a response or waiting weeks for a reply or having to follow up multiple times. So I do think as strata managers, we can be better on that. Um, Ash, this is a big one, that removing a tenant is a court process that requires evidence. And fining a tenant, don't know if I spelt fining correctly there, requires evidence. Do you want to tell me a little bit more about this, Ash? Yeah. The, um, in my experience, when there's been complaints from the strata about one of our tenants, um, doesn't happen a lot. But when it does happen, <laughs> it, um, it, it, I sometimes question who's complained uh, because there is definitely a, uh, a bit of a stigma that there are some you know, owner occupiers that live in complexes and they really don't like tenants living in the same complex as them. And from my experience, we find that they're very, um, they are uh, not very flexible and not hypercritical. Very How about hypercritical, Ash? <laughs> But I like that word. Um, so yeah, so I would I really need that proof. Um, and an example I had uh, that I um have mentioned to you before had a property. Uh, we've got a tenant who's been in the property for like six, eight years, long time, and then all of a sudden, an owner moved into the unit underneath. Full complaints constantly. It's been an absolute nightmare for us and for the tenant. And um, and it's like surely it's not our tenant because. She's been in there for so long. No one's ever complained about her and, um, and it ended up being someone, uh, yeah, an, an owner-occupier. So I need proof because that's really hard for me to go back to the tenant and just say, hey, there's a complaint about noise when I've got nothing to go by. So evidence is so important. Yeah. So, Ash, for you to be able to breach and then even remove a tenant via court, you need the evidence, don't you? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And it's Absolutely. not like a property manager doesn't want to get rid of a tenant that's not doing the right thing. It's just that you need the evidence. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, this is another one, a direct comment. Strata is misunderstood. So please, strata managers, property managers of ours, educate us gently. Be kind. We don't necessarily know it all. So as Ash said, help us in understanding. And then once we do, we then will be able to then for the future times, understand how we work forward. So I'm going to give everyone just a little bit quick summary on the property management side. When it comes to decisions, um, it all happens at the annual general meeting, the levies, the budgets, the everything. So Ash, when you've got a hot water system break or something like that, you just go straight to the one owner and you just assume that they have to find the money to fix it because you have timeframes that things have to be fixed on. For us, it depends on how much money is in the budget. Um, now, Ash, we talk about building good relationships. 
We struggle to build a relationship when an owner is via a property manager because we don't have the personal touch points. We are only, you're the intermediary in between. So with the annual general meeting, do you just forward the notice to the owner? Yeah, generally okay. it's not read and it's just forwarded to your owner. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the only suggestion I can say is, is that if PMs want quicker decisions, we can make those decisions straight away if they're in the budget and if they're factored for and we have the money for it. If they're not factored in the budget, then we have this really long process of trying to get somewhere between a majority of three to seven owners to agree, let alone to agree on a price, let alone a quote. Now, I find that a lot of property managers, when they forward this annual general meeting, they just say, you know, please find attached. And I'm not expecting a property manager to open it up. They are 60 to 100 pages. But can we ask your owners to encourage them to say, look, at the meeting, levies will be set, budgets will be set. Um, it's just very, you know, a very simple template. Um, we do highly recommend that you Zoom or that you do attend. Um, you know, we recommend that you're part of the Council of Owners because, Ash, I feel like property managers, they go to one owner and they get a decision. And when a tenant complains and says, oh, the maintenance is taking so long, no property manager wants long maintenance. You know, you just want to go to the owner and get it done. Strata managers are exactly the same. We do not want to hear from everyone continuously that the gate is broken because we won't hear from one person. We'll hear from 17 people. Then we'll hear from everyone else, the property managers, the tenants. And if we have it in our budget that we've got enough money for gate maintenance, we can go ahead. If not... Um, let's assume there's seven council of owners. Imagine waiting on four owners to come back to agree to fix something. And in our act, we have no timeframes. So you as a property manager have, you know, 24 hours organization for essential. And then we've got 48 hours for urgent. We have no timeframes. We ideally want these owners to come back to us, but we don't have your owners in our council of owners. So they're wondering what's taking so long and they're not attending the meetings and they're also not being part of the council of owners. So I know as strata managers, some of you might be saying, oh my gosh, you know, do we want all these? We, we just want people that respond as well. So when we're forwarding on that message, is it possible to let owners know that we encourage them to attend the annual general meeting? It's where levies are set. Um, you know, it please be part of the council of owners. It helps with the decision-making, all of that sort of stuff. Um, just add on, and it, it, I think that property managers have really failed in the part of when they do receive those notices, for, um, you know, actually having a, a flick through them and a glance at some of the important documents, because if they do have maintenance and they let the, uh, the strata manager know and the strata manager does come back to say, hey, it's not actually in the budget, you know, refer to the budget, it's not in the budget and uh, we have to go get seek um, the council of owners permission, then if we were to relay that, to a landlord to say, hey, it's not in your budget, I would hope that that would um, encourage them the following year to go find out why that budget hasn't allowed and why they haven't been able to act on those things quickly. So it's a great big round circle if um, if we, like I actually didn't know that before you had told me that. So now that I know that, I would absolutely let the owner know that there's delays because of the budget and that should, you know, um, make them want to be involved next year. And Ash, just to let you know, if we don't have it in the budget and we don't have the money, we have to go to an EGM or, or an extraordinary meeting. So the, the timeframes are just a lot longer. Um, if your owners can get involved, it definitely helps, especially in setting levies that have a reasonable budget. Um, because you sit at a meeting and you're always going to have those people that say they can't, but at least you recognize that you've got the money there. Okay. Nikki, I'm going to get straight into it nice and quickly. Okay. So what can a property manager to do to bridge the divide? Um, okay. So um, I'm going to show you some examples. Explain the issue and provide photos where possible and details that include the location of the issue. You tell me that the roof is leaking how am I supposed to know if where the roof is leaking? Where's exactly the same details you want from your tenant? We also want because we can't work out whose responsibility it is until we exactly know. Even if you said the front yard, you would be surprised how a lot owner may own a metre of their front yard, but not two metres. So we need exact location where possible. Um, okay, 
I know this is a bugbear of property managers, but as strata managers, we want to know why do you not have the strata plan and bylaws? Why do you just have the standard schedule one and two and you think that's the laws of the scheme? So, Ash, you guys are huge BDM, so you bring in a lot of business. Is it that hard to get the strata plan and the bylaws? It gets asked and then landlords don't keep that information. It's like they don't care about it and it's not like, it's like, you know, deep down in their box of paperwork in their shed and they don't really have it handy and the follow-up process is then not done to say, hey, just letting you know, we still haven't received it. Um, there's a lack on that part. So it's, oh. and I think as well, like um, someone has mentioned something about the sales side of things. It, it's even when you buy a, a strata property, there's not really even any education piece from the sales rep to the to the investor buying the strata property. So it's sort of, it's from the very start, it's not ever seen as something like really important. You need to make sure you read this, you, you, you know, you um, hold on to it because your property manager is going to need it. it. It starts right from the beginning. So it's just not a handy document that people keep. So Ash, obviously your owners don't read it because I get it. The strata sale disclosure is massive. It's a hundred pages and then you guys don't get it. So then the tenant then therefore doesn't get it. So it is a strata management bugbear that you should have the strata plan and you should have the bylaws. And I hate to say, if your owner needs to pay for it, they need to pay for it is the way that we think. Um, but also too, we don't feel like a tenant should move into a property unless they they know what they're allowed to use and that they have the bylaws. Um, we've okay. already done encourage your owners to attend annual general meetings. So there's um, a big question, Jamie, I was just going to quickly bring up. So um, Guyans put, why are property managers not taking a proactive approach in reviewing information held on file, um, something in a new management pack? So I, I just wanted to quickly mention that um, because I, I agree. I think that there could be definitely more proactivity from a property manager. Um, just like a property manager, if you're listening, you do compliance checks on your like landlord insurance or building insurance um, and, and security checks and things like that, I think that the, the strata um, strata details should be part of your compliance check. I think that's a fantastic idea and that's something that property managers listening to should um, should consider. And look, Ash, I'm obviously from a PM side of things. I, I get it. You've signed up this owner. Time is crucial. You want to get that tenant in the property. You know, we're looking at a leasing window of listing and having a tenant in in a week. So you do your ICDs, you do your smoke alarms, you do your advertising, you get the tenant in, and it's one of those things that just becomes on the long list in time. So again, though, PMs, please, BDMs, add it in there as your pack. Um, please note that if we can't resolve an issue, if we don't have the funds or allocation in budget, so we need your owners to be on board and understand that they're a part of that process. Um, we don't go to one owner sometimes too. We go to a majority of somewhere between three and ten or seven. So you can imagine if I'm putting out for maintenance and I get one reply. In most strata schemes, we have one great owner and then you're pushing and prodding the other two. And just to let you know, the Strata Titles Act has no timeframes. So again, I can push and prod them all I want, but I can't say oh, this has to be done in 24 hours because it's essential. I, I don't have that parameter in the Act. Um, also, just understanding that levies are mainly going up, not because the strata manager is pocketing the levies going up, like you guys collect the rent that everyone thinks, but insurance is a large process. Excess are high and claims take a long time. So, Nikki, I know we're talking way too much, so we're going to wrap it up for questions. Um, I think Ash and I would just like to work with this is, is that Ash and I know each other personally. We're totally different, but we absolutely believe that it works by moving forward together. Um, I've taken two quotes directly from e from the survey, so please don't take it personally if one of these were yours. But I wanted to highlight that all property managers want is for strata managers to work with them. Um, and all on the other side of things is, is that strata managers talk about friendly, open communication and working together. And a lot of you jokingly said, Strata manager versus sales agent. But Nikki, I think that might be our next one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We can certainly move on to question. Uh, one of the things that's come up in chat, which I might just mention, uh, we've been asked, 
it's concerning that um, property managers have never visited the property they manage. And I'd just like to bring that up because I think usually property managers probably would visit the property more than a strata manager would. Would that be a correct statement? In WA, we do around three or four per year. So we do. But Australia-wide, there's definitely going to be a movement of, and it already is a movement, of where we outsource routine inspections. So that is actually going to become a bit more of a longer problem in the future. Uh, and so something definitely to watch. And there was a comment about, you know, photos. Absolutely. Like if you're at a property doing inspection, you can take lots of photos, send them through to the strata manager. I mean, it's, it's, it should just be common knowledge, but it's not, unfortunately. And Jamie, did you have anything to say about that? Um, no, look, I, I definitely agree. I mean, I think there's also a misconception that strata managers go to the property. We don't. So we are heavily relying on you to provide accurate details of maintenance. Um, you know, the number of emails our team gets that says, the tenant has advised we have a leak. Please action it. Like, Again, um, I think my, you know, uh, something that I've had is, is that not only do you please provide us a photo and a location, but also if possible on that same email, put the access details, you know, um, Ash, you talked about, okay, when you don't put the property address in, I've just got to come back to you. When you tell me maintenance and you don't give me the tenant's access details, I, again, I'm just coming back to you. If there are consistent and ongoing behavioural issues at the property, can the strata manager and the property manager work together to get a better result for everyone in the building? Um, Ash, I would agree that neither of us want a resident, whether that be a tenant or an owner who disrupts the building. Um, but as strata managers know, if it's a lot owner, you have to go through SAT tribunal. Um, you know, you it's a, behavioural issues have to be documented, you know, even noise. People have said to me, how do I prove noise? And we've got these things now where you can actually get a decibel meter on your phone and record it. Um, you know, what is noise? So I think that strata managers have to understand is, is that for a property manager to remove a tenant, you need just as much behavioural evidence, don't you, Ash, to be able to take that to court? You do. And ideally, I would actually like to see um, a couple of different people reporting that as well, because we have had a situation, oh, like lots of situations where, um, you know, tenants have been targeted maybe by the way they look. You're not being targeted. Multiple people are complaining. You need to sort it out. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. If an issue presents in a tenanted lot and the responsibility for the costs is not yet determined, so we're not really sure whether it's lot property or common property, who should engage the contractor? Is this the responsibility of the property manager or the strata manager and how does urgency uh, factor into this? I'm going to I mean, say property manager, Ash. Yeah, I was actually going to say that too. I agree. I think that it's us that have got a tenant that's being inconvenienced and that owner needs to, um, I feel like the owner needs to make sure that they sort out the inconvenience to the tenant at the end of the day. So I agree. I would say to my clients, listen, we're just going to have to get the plumber out, we'll get into a full report, get the job done. Once that's sorted, tenants off our back, I will then put it forward to the strata manager to say, hey, this is situation. It, sometimes it goes for after hours if I can't get hold of, um, you know, a strata manager. That's I, a different topic, Ash. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but, then, but I would, yeah, absolutely tell yes. my owner to sort it out themselves and then deal with the strata later and see. Yeah. And look, I'm, I think this also notes what Nadine has also said in the chat is, is that if we don't have specific detail and we don't exactly know what your plumbing issue is, um, Nadine's wrote, we have to then go out to a group of owners who might not even know what the issue is, which are the other owners. It doesn't affect them. And so their timeliness is not there. Um, the Strata Titles Act says, and I'll be honest, that the owners, that the Strata Scheme must it has no time frames. Whereas, Ash, I feel like in the Residential Tenancies Act, you know that you either have 24 or 48. So in my mind, my owners, as much as I would like to hurry them up to get that maintenance done, because we all want it done quickly, they are in no legal time frame, and it doesn't affect them. So your tenant's plumbing leak, they may get back to me on Thursday on whether they think we should proceed. So again, guys, to me, it's PM, you've got legal timeframes, and then 
afterwards we can work out who pays for it. And if your owner's not happy with the decision, they can raise it with the council of owners. They can raise it at the AGM. You know, I've had a lot of owners go to me, Jamie, I paid this bill and I didn't get reimbursed. Let's raise it at the AGM. So that is definitely my preference is property managers. But I know a lot of property managers would say strata manager. So can I also say that as a property manager, we find that owners I mean, it's also them about being, you know, not educated. The owners quite often would say strata, you know, strata problem, strata problem. And then what happens is to the naive property manager, what do they do? They just call up the strata manager and then put it onto you as your problem. When in fact, the strata, um, the property manager probably should have said at that time to the owner, listen, is there a reason why you feel like this is a strata, you know, problem? Because the owners just sometimes just throw that on us and then we just go to you automatically without having any thought or process or questioning the owner and the owner quite often is just trying to fob the job off and not wanting to pay it directly so we do have to be as a property manager a bit more stronger and assertive and use our brains a little bit more to go well, listen do we really think that that's a strata issue or you know should we um be investigating ourselves before going straight to you and making it your problem I think there's definitely um, some improvement for a property manager there Look, and Ash, some actual property managers and strata managers sent me some email examples. So, Nikki, I hope you don't mind. I know we've only got two minutes here and I might figure out how I'm going to work out. Okay. So, Ash, you exactly talked about it. If you, And I'm sorry if this is one of your emails. I've taken out all personal details. But see the one on the top, Ash? This is an actual email. Good afternoon to a strata manager. Tenant has advised the roof is leaking. Please follow this up and let me know of any updates regarding this issue. That was the initial email. The strata manager went back with six dot points. Which room? Is it leaking when it's raining? What is tenant's access details? When did they first notice this? Um, you know, and it came back with, this was the property manager's reply. Good morning. The tenant has advised the leaking happens when it's raining only. Would be best for the contractor to contact the tenant themselves. This was yeah. only an email a strata manager received. Now, I'll give you an example. The one to the right is amazing. It had photos, probably as suggested, one, three, and five meters away. Um, it had the tenant's access details. I've blocked them out straight away. Um, it actually even had previous correspondence from the old strata manager um, so that we could see what was going on. Um, the one underneath, have a look at that one. That was a plumbing issue where this property manager went above and beyond. Um, and so strata managers, we've also got to make sure that we go above and beyond. We've got these PMs that will do all this wonderful stuff. Um, but Ash, the last one that you just talked about was an owner will keep saying, it's strata, it's strata, I pay my strata levies. The email at the bottom was one from an actual property manager who works in a strata management office. And she even noted that she did believe that it was probably the owner, but she wanted to double check. So that's the way I would put it. Like, you know, I've spoken to the owner about this. I'm pretty sure it's them, but I just need that confirmation. That is how I would put it. Because I get it, owners want you to push and ask. Um, but that in my, that last one at the bottom was a lovely way of putting it forward to a strata manager. Okay, wonderful. That's excellent. They're great examples. Thanks for including those, Jamie, in there. Now, we are just about to finish. So would either of you like, Jamie, can I pass to you? Have you got any final comments to make before we finish the session today? No, but Nikki, I don't think we're done with all this great <laughs> chat. I think there's round two. But I also do think, Ash, and if you do agree, that I think it's a perfect chance. Let's bring them together. Um, it's much different when there's that human connection between the two of them. There's that collaboration. So PM Collect is now going to have to throw some strata stuff in there, I think. Well, well, absolutely. I'm just thinking right now of all these videos that I can do to for property managers um, using these points to make them better property managers. And so I absolutely will be going to the drawing board to do that. So um, that, that would be my plan and my commitment to strata managers to really help um, educate on my side. And um, I love doing that. And I think that over time, we should see some more improvements. So um, property managers have, have a lot to work on. I hope strata managers do as well. So, but Nikki, thank you also for bringing us together. Excellent. I think it was great. It was really good to have the conversation and get the communication out there. And hopefully we'll see some, some change for the better in the future from both sides. And it could be a positive, uh, a positive initiative for both sides. If you gained value from this video, please hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're looking for information about parking, strata insurance, 
defects and more, head over to lookupstrata.com.au or sign up to our free weekly newsletter via the link in the description box below.